के मतलब यू कैन स्टार्ट आप फुल साइज करके यू कैन स्टार्ट स्टैक को फुल साइज करो और आई एम ऑडिबल नाउ या 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 ओके स्लाइड को रनिंग मोड फुल फुल से ओके ओके गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल द लर्नर्स ऑफ पी जी डी एस एस इन कोर्स एम एस डी जीरो वन टू इको सिस्टम एंड नेचुरल रिसोर्सेस एंड ब्लॉक थ्री एंड एनर्जी एंड मिनरल रिसोर्स इन दिस आई एम गोइंग टू कवर द टॉपिक एनर्जी एंड एनर्जी क्राइसिस तो कमिंग टू द टॉपिक वी नो ऑल नो अबाउट द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ एनर्जी we know that world is uh, dependent all the economy of the entire globe is dependent on energy the developing country developed country the growth of every country is dependent upon the energy so yeah, all the countries we know there are different type of energy and uh, energy dependence is increasing so much the need of energy is skyrocketed in the past uh, few decades the reason being there are number of reason as we know that there is quest of uh, development the there is increasing population the increasing pressure on uh, or we can say the over consumption all transportation electrical system uh, development so many things are there so all this is putting a tremendous pr pressure on energy system so it it ultimately it has led to the pressure on our precious resources fossil fuel resources the use of fossil fuel resources we all know that it has uh, resulted into number of health issues uh, traditionally we were using number of resources whether it is wood whether it is cow dung wood chips or fossil fuel coal oil natural gases petroleum etc these all are our conventional energy resources conventional means traditional energy resources since ages we are using these resources but as these resources are limited in number the uh, disadvantages with these resources are that these are causing uh, affect to the health beside that we all know that increase in uh, greenhouse gases or other gases uh, has put uh, pressure on the environment and climate change we know is one of the leading factor for that we are now shifting or the everyone is looking for the cleaner source of energy we are looking the alternative sources of energy the sources of energy which are less polluting which are uh, environmental friendly which are not having the impact on the human health environmental health and so on and so forth so in this sections we will be discussing about what are the energy resources why these are important there are different type of energy resources what are what is the status of energy resources uh, uh, globally as well as when we talk about uh, indian context and what are the government steps or government policies which is uh, taking place which is uh, uh, government is taking adopting the measure to increase the clean energy uh, percentages into our energy mix and what are the solutions for this energy crisis so coming to the first slide why why uh, the first thing what i wanted to discuss that why do our energy system matters why we are so much concerned about energy so before that i just wanted to give you a glimpse of uh, what is the energy sector is you see that if you see globally 940 million people that is approximately 1 billion people they are not having electricity as home when we talk about energy the energy we required for different purposes we require for heating for cooking for our lighting industrial purpose and so on and so forth but 1 billion people does not have electricity at home then 3 billion person 3 billion people which include 40% of the total population is that they do not have access to clean fuel for cooking still these people uh, percentage of these people all over the world they are using the wood cow dung or other methods which are not clean and it is affecting their health there are so many diseases which are related to these which is causing air pollution because of use of this old type of uh, fuel and 
they this is not clean fuel and the it is impacting the health of the human beings or the people then if we see it's still more than 80 percent of our energy still comes from the fossil fuel fossil fuels are the conventional fuels we know that uh, oil natural gas petroleum and so on these are the fossil fuel and 80 percent of the energy still comes from this fossil fuel total greenhouse gases emission is accounted by the source of energy. The other source, we know that agriculture is one of the says or land use change, but the one third of the total greenhouse gases, which is leading to the climate change, is comes from this type of energy. So we need a shift, paradigm shift, from these conventional energy sources to uh, clean energy sources, which are renewable in nature, so that we, when we talk about the decarbonization of the economy, when we talk about the uh, uh, achievement of the sustainable development goal, we know that clean energy for everyone is the sustainable development goal. So we need a shift from fossil fuel to low carbon energy sources. As I've told, there are, uh, we all know about that. There are uh, the sources of energy is divided into conventional energy sources and non-conventional energy sources. When we talk about conventional energy sources, again, they may be commercial or non-commercial. The commercial sources basically are coal, petroleum, and electricity. And non-commercial energy sources are fire, dry down, which we use at our home for our cooking, heating, and other purposes. There are different methods of uh, classification of energy sources. This is one of the uh, convenient method I have given. Then non-conventional energy sources are those sources which are uh, can be used, which are also renewable, which are also called alt alternative source of energy, which are basically clean sources of energy. And these are the sources which are renewable. There is one more way of dividing the energy. We know that exhaustible and inexhaustible source of energy, renewable and non-renewable source of energy, conventional, traditional source of or alternative source of energy. So these non-conventional energy sources, basically solar energy, wind energy, tidal energy, bioenergy, geothermal energy, uh, OECD, and from waste and so on. These are the non-conventional source of energy. Then there is one more type of source of energy. Sometimes it is divided at uh, renewable energy, non-renewable energy, and nuclear energy. So there are many ways of dividing energy, but these are the basically source of energy. The next is, sorry, it is not moving. Then again, as I told that energy sources again can be divided into non-renewable sources and uh, renewable sources of energy. Renewable so non-renewable sources of energy are those, as we all know, those energy sources which are limited in amount. The they the time for their renewable is uh, or, or formation is very slow. Like uh, example, fossil fuels. These are the sources of energy, oil, coal, natural gases, petroleum. These are the sources of energy, which formation is so slow. And because of our overconsumption, they are almost exhausted. Besides, these sources are also very polluting sources. The nuclear sources, we know that nuclear energy is a very important source of energy. There are many countries which are dependent on this type of sources, a source of energy, fission energy, and this is also one of the clean energy. But as this is non-renewable because we are having very limited amount of uh, uh, radioactive material or the um, raw material which is required for the generation of nuclear energy, then renewable energy, solar, wind, hydroelectric, biofuel, geothermal, hydrogen gas, etc. In the slide, uh, uh, just it is a uh, word energy 2020. Uh, this data uh, shows that if you if you see the global primary energy consumption by source, the 84.3 of the global energy comes from fossil fuel and this is 2020 data. So you can say that in 2000, if you see it was 86.1, but still there is very little amount of reduction as far as fossil fuel energy consumption is concerned. And out of this 84.3%, oil is responsible for 33.1, 
coal is 27% and natural gas 24.3%. Remaining 11.4% comes from renewable and 15.7% if you see that is low carbon sources, which we say that these are the sources which can uh, be a future source of energy and as far as climate change is concerned, as far as health is concerned, air pollution is concerned. Beside this, uh, like nuclear power is 4.3, hydropower is 6.4, wind is 2.2, solar energy is 1.1, biofuel 0.7%, and renewable is 0.9%. This other renewable, if you see, these include geothermal, biomass, wave, tidal. These are the other renewable source of energy. So still, 84.3% of global energy comes from fossil fuel, which are non-renewable sources of energy. Whenever we talk about energy crisis, many things come into our mind. When we talk about energy crisis, it's basically either oil crisis, either it is a petrol crisis, diesel crisis. Whenever these uh, sources are less, these are not available, then we talk about the uh, prices. But when, because most of the energy which we use for our industry, which we use for our uh, fertilizer plants or other, other industry, these comes from these fossil fuels, so source of energy. If you see this energy, again, it is 2020 data. If you see uh, all over the world, total energy, if you see 67% share of the BRICS countries, there is an uh, increase in uh, energy consumption uh, in, since 2000. USA, if you see crude oil, there is 11%. There is rise in crude oil production in USA. If you see in Latin America, continuously for the fifth year in the row, where there is reduced production and sanction in Venezuela, that is oil products minus 2.7%. Natural gas is, you see, dynamic demand in USA and EU is 3%. Plus one. Coal, if you see in European countries, European Union, minus 1.8% coal, the production, 18% the use of coal has been reduced. Electricity, if you see 78% contribution of mix of the global increase in power consumption between 2000 to 2019. So what I wanted to say is that that in every country, the use of energy source or the kind of energy they are using is different. For example, there are many countries, if you see, if you see Sweden, Netherlands, Finland, France, they are using different portion of the energy in their energy mix. This is uh, this chart, which has taken from the World Energy Resources 2016. It shows comparative primary energy consumption over the past 15 years. If you see from 2005, 2010 to 2015, different type of energy sources which has been used by different countries, whether it is oil, gas, hydropower, solar, coal, nuclear, wind, or other renewable, which is still a very less person whenever we talk about the renewable energy. Wherever you see the major portion is coal, still it is coal 28.61, 29.84, or 29.20. If you see oil, again, it is the major person that is 35.96, 33.49, 32.94. The reduction in from past 10 years, if you see the reduction is there, but it is again very slow. We talk about the solar energy, but if you see comparatively in all the years, if 2005, it is only 0.22%. 2010, it is 0.63. And again, 2015 is 1.44. So there is increase in solar energy. But if you see as compared to the uh, gas, oil, or coal, it is almost negligible. You see the use of gas. It is 22, natural gas, 22.89%. In 2010, it is 23.7%. And 2015, it is 23.85%. But still, from I have shown you the data of 2020 also. If you see that still the percent of the fossil fuel is maximum. As I told, according to the 
about report 2020, the fossil fuel use is 84%. Remaining only 16% is used by all various type of energy. So we are using the energy mostly from the fossil fuel, from the conventional, whether it's in natural gas, coal, and oil. And this is leading to a, a situation which we call energy crisis because most of our industry, most of our economy is dependent on this type of source of energy. That's why the crisis is. So what is the need of the hour is to shift toward the clean energy, to shift towards the renewable energy, the energy which is renewed, which can be used, which is not in a limited amount. And if we are using it, we, we, we is it will not finish. So this is the status of the primary energy consumption over past 15 years. Then if you see, uh, this is uh, energy transition, global and national perspective. If you see, this is uh, taken from statistical review of world energy. If you see that again, uh, the percentage, all these graphs, but they show that if you see percentage coal, crude oil and natural gas, they, contribute maximum and very little amount is contributed by uh, hydropower, nuclear, wind, solar, and other renewable sources. This is uh, showed the India's energy mix. This is a ministry taken from Ministry of New and Renewable Energy 2013. I'll be giving you data of recent uh, 2020 also, but if you see in 2013, if you see share of different renewable in the renewable energy mix in the Indian electricity grid, you will find that 70% uh, if you see, this was in 2013, it is renewable energy mix. It was taken from wind power, 14.3 14 small hydropower, 8.4% is Bagasse cogeneration, 4.9% biomass, and 0 0.3 to 2.1%, it is uh, taken from solar photo photovoltaic cell. So if you see, this is only renewable energy, which I have given, non-renewable is again, India is also dependent on non-renewable. So in this also, if you see that solar energy in 2013 was almost very less, 0 0.3 to 2.1. So this, this, uh, Till now, we know that there are different types of sources. So I will not go in detail into this. The fossil fuel are oil, coal, natural gas, and we can say nuclear power. Coal, we know that it is the type of fuel which is used from generation. There are different type of coal, bituminous, anthracite, uh, uh, etc. And depending upon the moisture, depending upon the age, depending upon its compassion, different type of coal is uh, characterized. We all know about that. And then there is, it is a fossil fuel because it is uh, formed by the compression or it is a, of a dead plant material, which is found uh, millions of years uh, ago buried under the earth's surface and uh, that is converted into coal. Then oil also, we know that uh, the petroleum, uh, that is also a kind of fossil fuel and natural gas. Among these three, natural gas is considered the most, uh, out of these three, natural gas is considered the most uh, good in a sense that when we talk about the environmental pollution. Then there is nuclear power. Nuclear power, we see that it is a, a good source of energy. It is also considered a clean source of energy, but it is limited. It is a very limited amount that is available. And when we talk about renewable energy sources, there are a number of renewable energy sources. Uh, like hydropower, marine energy, solar energy, wind energy, geothermal energy, and bioenergy. We know about the hydropower. This is the source of electricity from uh, a very long time. There are small hydropower plant and a large hydropower plant. We know that the water falls uh, into the turbine and then electricity is we There are a number of hydropower projects in India. Whenever we think about Bhakranagal, Damodar, and Dairy Dam, etc., we, we know that all the type of energy, they are having certain advantages and certain type of 
disadvantages when we talk about hydropower again it is a clean source of energy but it has it is having uh, depending upon the type of hydropower it is a, it is a source of energy which is mostly used all over the world and it has certain social and environmental issues but otherwise it is having a, a good source of energy we will be coming one by one into uh, everything then wind energy again we know that the same when uh, wind drives to turbine to make electricity it is offshore energy and onshore energy the characteristic is uh, again low cost the only problem is again there are in, i think we have discussed this all thing in the first lecture when we were talking about the sustainable energy so i'll not go into detail that these type of energy what is the dependency on where is storage uh, problem is there how to store the energy how to transport the energy it's grid problem and so on and so forth so tidal energy ocean thermal energy geothermal energy solar energy i'll not go in detail all these thing because we all know then coming to the type of energy bioenergy bioenergy we know it uh, derived from non fossil fuel material and biological in nature we we coming to the biofuel we know that uh, there are many thing nowadays we are uh, uh, talking about the bioenergy or biofuel energy we know that there are different generation of biofuel whether we talk about first generation second generation uh, like mexico and uh, um, uh, germany they were using the corn and other who uh, cereals etc to production of biofuel that they are first generation biofuel but then several issues uh, came Uh, because these there are uh, whenever we talk about food security there is less space for the food to provide the to everyone so then we shift to uh, second generation when then third generation now fourth generation when we talk about the algal biofuel so there are different type of biofuels that is being produced uh, now we are shifting to bioenergy where the bioenergy we are talking or biofuel from the waste based to energy we are talking there are agriculture ways there are industrial ways number of ways that can be converted into energy there are different type of uh, technological process when we consider considered about how to convert the energy uh, from different type of waste or different type of agriculture ways that is uh, incineration pyrolysis then uh, wt so on and so forth so these are the uh, process for uh, production of biofuel now uh, when we talk about bioenergy or biogas we usually use for electricity it is relatively cheap good environmental in depth and, and, and there is good for grid off so number of bio crops are used for electricity bio gasoline and bio diesel there are different type of conventional and advanced biofuel aviation fuel like i would like to um, just again uh, stress to it that india also one of the if you see 2020 report iea 2020 report india is going to be a, a leading country as far as the clean energy is concerned recently if you see last year india has launched a flight first flight that is uh, based on biodiesel jet propulsion it is from dehradun to delhi and again there are number of uh, biofuel plant india is working on the biofuel and bioenergy also this bioenergy if you see these are the different type of uh, crops which are used for biofuel production all over the world may sugarcane soya bean grape seed palm oil etc and we know that brazil usa and canada european union these are the leading countries when the biodiesel or biofuel is concerned so i will come into the potential of uh, india for the production when we talk about energy crisis the main concern or our main focus is how india is performing as far as energy mix is concerned so these all are taken from the ministry of in, uh, renewable energy there are earlier there were different uh, 
different ministry that were uh, working for the energy but now renewable energy ministry uh, still there are many um, ministry are uh, working for the uh, energy sector but this is taken from the mnr so when we i have given only three when when i talk about the indian potential for the uh, green energy or sustainable energy solar energy wind energy and uh, the third one uh, i have taken is this small hydropower energy. So talking about the solar energy in India, if you see National Institute of Solar Energy, it has assessed the country's solar potential. It is, uh, if you see, it is about 748 gigawatt is uh, assuming that is 3% of the wasteland area. It is covered by solar PV modules. So solar power, what I wanted to say is solar power is coming in a big way as far as and India's energy mix is concerned. So solar energy, it has taken a central place in India's national action plan on climate change also, which is having a national solar mission. It is one of the key mission and national solar mission, we all know it was launched on 11th January, 2010. So when we talk about the national solar mission, it is one of the a uh, major initiative of government of India, and it has the active participation from almost all the states They because uh, to promote sustainable growth. And we know that Gujarat, we know that Gujarat is uh, coming in a big way when we talk about the solar energy. There is number of advantage as we know about whenever we talk about the energy security, whenever we talk about sustainable growth, whenever we talk about clean energy. So India is putting much of the effort for the solar energy or producing solar energy grids. The aim of the country is to establish India as a global leader in solar energy. So they, they, the policy condition are like that. Solar technology diffusion across the country is uh, made uh, friendly, state friendly, so that the targets of national solar mission can be achieved. So if we talk about the solar mission, it target uh, installing 100 DW grid, which connected through solar power plants by the year 2022. So again, if you talk about the nationally determined contributions, INDCs, India's INDCs, they target to achieve about 40% cumulative electric power install capacity from non-fossil fuel based energy resources to reduce the energy intensity of its GDP by 32 to 35% from 2005 level by 2030. So if you see to achieve all these target, government of India has launched various schemes so that various states can be encouraged to generate the solar power country, like there are a number of schemes, solar park scheme, VGF scheme, CPCU scheme, defense scheme, central bank, so many schemes are there so that the various states can be encouraged to use this kind of solar power. Then potential of wind energy in India, we know that uh, wind is an intermittent type of energy, it depends upon the site, not all the area like solar energy also, but wind energy more specific. They this type this is site specific resource of energy. So wind resource assessment is very essential for the potential site. In this regard, the government as India has extensively worked on assessment of the wind potential. So if you see National Institute of Wind Energy, INIWE, it has installed over 800 wind monitoring stations all over the country and they have prepared a map at uh, different height, whether it is 15 meter height, what is the wind speed, 80 meter height and 100 meter height above the ground level so that the wind energy potential can be explored. And talking about the small hydro energy uh, plant in India, the hydropower project, as we know, they may be large and small hydropower project waste, depending upon the size. The When we talk about the large hydropower project, there are certain disadvantages, like uh, we know that displacement of the people, and then it will affect the ecological integrity. It will affect the... Uh, 
ecology, the large amount of deforestation, rehabilitation, environmental impact. And so, and besides that, the larger dam, they are also causing uh, different type of uh, problems to seismic zone like a Terry Dam. We know that the reservoir is so large that it has come under the ecological sensitive area, earthquake sensitive area. So, so many uh, disadvantages of large dam areas. So, India uh, is now fo focusing on small hydropower page project depending on their size. So, if we talk about the hydropower plant of 25 megawatt or below capacity, they are classified as small hydropower. Then small hydropower, they can again classified as micro hydropower, mini hydropower and small hydropower depending upon their size. So if you see that uh, Indian government has identified for the generation of small hydropower or mini hydropower project all over the country through alternate hydro energy center of IIT Rurki. Uh, in uh, 2016, that there are 7,135 7, sites where this small hydropower or micro hydropower can be installed and they can be used for the generation of power all over the country. Many hilly states, mainly hilly state of India, if you see Arunachal Pradesh, Manchal Pradesh, Jammu Kashmir, Uttarakhand, these hilly area have the, they contribute almost half of the potential as far as this small hydropower is concerned. And other states may be Maharashtra, Chhattisgarh, Karnataka and Kerala, which can contribute for this small and mini hydropower project. Then when there is la when there is more potential, these states have been given the more priority after the identification and there are a number of projects has been installed, monitoring of the project, reviewing of the policy, how these are affecting the environment, how the investment of the private sectors can be encouraged, the policy worker, policy uh, makers are working on this. If you see, the Renewable Energy Ministry is also giving special emphasis to promote use of new and different designs of water mills for mechanical as well as electricity generation. So one more thing that government is also involving the use of the local organization, like there are different type of water mill association, cooperative society, NGOs, villages, energy cooperative, state nodal agencies, so that each and every stakeholders which are uh, getting benefit of this or which can be affected, uh, their views, their ideas can be involved in the policy. So these three main energy, uh, there are many other uh, energy also which India is focusing. Uh, there are a number of other projects when there is waste energy is concerned, bioenergy is concerned, biomass energy is concerned and green, green energy corridor also. India has also focusing on green energy uh, corridor. In uh, this slide, in few one or two slides, I have just wanted to give you a global energy outlook 2020. It's a key point. As we know that during COVID, we know that we are deeply shaken uh, by the COVID-19. So this report, specifically Global Energy Outlook Report 2020, which has been released in October, it says that the energy uh, consumption or energy demand during this global COVID time, during this pandemic time has been uh, reduced and it has been grown slowly. This is very interesting actually, because in 2019, we were seeing, we were observing that the energy demand is increasing continuously, but according to this global energy outlook because of COVID, the short term, so we will be saying a short term demand, demand of fossil fuel has reduced while renewable have increased. So International Energy SNC has found that there is decline for oil, coal and natural gas and nuclear but renewable has grown by 1%. The reason being is that because of this uh, COVID, mostly the uh, 
movement of the people has been reduced the use of petrol oil which is from for uh, basically for uh, transportation it has been reduced the travel and human activity has slashed the use of fossil fuel energy in 2020 and it has resulted in the reduction of co2 emission we know that the CO2 is basically responsible for uh, climate change. So the data of Energy Outlook 2020 says that there is reduction in the uh, CO2. So this may help in reaching the goal of Paris Climate Agreement, but it has not been assessed uh, till now. So this says that the emission uh, can could fall roughly by 8%. So, due to this, the level of carbon dioxide may reduce to 2010 level. But still, there are need to be, there are many policies that need to be addressed so that uh, the climate change uh, or the reduction of emission can be uh, accessed. So, the Paris Target Agreement is, uh, we know that the Paris Agreement, it talks about the reduction of carbon dioxide level, but this uh, global energy report, it says that the there is energy related CO2 emission through transportation has been reduced. So, over the next 20 years, the ambitious climate scenario suggests that emission will need to decline at roughly the same rate to align with international climate goal. So uh, we know that, uh, that there are a number of uh, countries uh, which are dependent on coal. So the if you see that there are stark differences in fossil fuel consumption, mark the energy divide across the globe, east and global west. If you see global east, Asia, Pacific, Africa, and Middle East, and global west american europe and eurasia there is difference in the consumption of fossil fuel and apart from fossil fuel natural gas its demand is also expected to decline in the global west across all scenario so this this report which will say that it is a short term report because basically this year we know that we all uh, were facing this pandemic so energy fossil fuel use has been reduced so now i will be coming to energy crisis prevention how we can prevent this scenario which talks about the energy crisis we we there are number of methods why we can uh, reduce this energy crisis the first and foremost thing because whenever as i told energy crisis we talk about the fossil fuel but if you increase if we increase the, uh, our energy mix more of the renewable energy this energy crisis can be prevented now number of uh, uh, researches should be more focused or policy should be focused on the renewable energy technology, whether it is solar, water, geothermal, uh, hydropower, etc., or nuclear power. There should be, there, there is a need to shift from coal to uh, or from other type of uh, non renewable energy or fossil fuel energy to renewable energy technology. We always talk about this, but still the percentage we know that it is 85%, still it is contributing. So slowly and slowly there is a need that we should be more dependent on renewable energy technology. Well, the, the how it can be done, if we talk about the transport, still the major transportation, we, we are dependent on fossil fuel, petrol, oil, diesel, natural gas. So there is a need how we can shift towards the uh, renewable energy technology. So we need to develop different kind of biofuels, ethanol, hydrogen fuel, electricity fuels, or other, uh, few, other type of uh, uh, methods or technology so that the dependency of transport section or transportation can be reduced on these fossil fuel. Energy efficiency and conservation is uh, one of the most important thing by which we can prevent the energy crisis. We know that uh, nowadays we are totally dependent on the electricity. So 
uh, like um, for example, I'll give that uh, in India, the government has given a scheme of LED. If we are using the sources which can reduce the energy consumption, if we are using reducing the wastage of energy, the large amount of energy is being waste. If we, we can use the clean energy sources, sustainable energy sources, different type of uh, energy apparatus, which can be instead of electricity, they are working on uh, the energy saving methods. So uh, these all, there are different methods by which we can reduce the energy efficiency. So we should uh, focus more to increase the energy efficiency, reducing the wastage of energy, and we should need, uh, there is a need to conserve the energy. So low carbon, low cost energy and battery technology need to be developed. We need to improve our energy efficiency, energy per unit uh, capita. This all need to be uh, conserved or this all need to be looked after. So uh, what uh, in nutshell I wanted to say is that, that we all know that uh, global energy consumption need uh, if you see past century, it is basically it is driven by the expanding population and uh, our quest for prosperity, higher living standard, higher population. So all because of this, the demand of the energy, whether it is the coal, whether it is oil, whether it is natural gas, it is increasing tremendously on renewable also. So if you see that uh, in this quest of having higher living standard, this has uh, resulted, we are well aware that this, uh, this has resulted into increase of living standard. Uh, we are having livelihood. It has uh, in increased, the, there is decreasing global, global poverty, but same time, it has also resulted into the climate change and other environmental changes. Uh, we know that uh, there is a, uh, uh, increasing in air pollution, we know that increase in uh, greenhouse gases. And the second thing that these resources, we know these fossil fuel resources are limited. They are going to exhaust very soon. They, they are going to finish very soon. So what the society is facing, the society is facing the energy crisis. So we need to address these challenges. So we need a, a shift in the, our global energy system. We need a shift of global energy system to clean energy transition. We need uh, energy sources which emit less greenhouse uh, uh, gases, which can be considered as clean, uh, clean and energy source. We know that uh, industrial revolution, since we know that most of uh, the country's economy is dependent on fossil fuel and it is affecting the um, health and climate change. So what we need is that we need a... Uh, this, we need to displace this fossil fuel in our energy mix. So we need uh, clean energy, we need the energy sources which are uh, uh, renewable, whether it is wind energy, hydropower energy, solar energy, biomass energy, bioenergy, or uh, other sources of energy, which then only the SDG goal, which is clean energy can be achieved. So these are, we know the benefit of these all type of energy. Uh, India, if you talk about India, India has taken a significant step in uh, improving its energy efficiency. Uh, if we talk about the December 2019, India has deployed around 84 gigawatt of grid, which is connected by renewable electricity capacity. If you see energy, India's total uh, energy generation, it has reached 366 gigawatt in 2019. India is also making a very good progress. If you see to reach its target 175 gigawatt of renewable energy, uh, 2022, if you see, uh, there are, uh, num when we talk about uh, uh, grid, India has also working on this foster grid expansion, uh, uh, establishing the grid at demand side, The uh, beside this uh, air pollution, as far as air pollution is concerned, India has also progressively strengthened its national clean air program 
and uh, if you see the need uh, when we talk about the national clean air program it has uh, uh, also uh, the target to reach the uh, air purification according to this uh, i'm talking about the draft national policy national energy policy the niti ayog is uh, framing a draft national energy policy so it is uh, with the consultation of all the stakeholder they are working and the government has identified the uh, the critical data as, as i was saying that assessment of the wind energy assessment of the small hydropower plant uh, different type of energy policy what is the uh, every state's potential to generate all these type of renewable energy so government has identified has collected this important energy data and niti io is coming with an energy policy national energy policy which will include which we expect that it will result into a energy mix which will be more focusing on renewable energy so this is what for today thank you